My sympathy is with Brian, because, you know, I used to sit in that chair. And, you know, you're talking about all this great stuff and all these different variations, but somehow Brian's got to turn this into a press guy. I was talking about it's, before. It's, it's just it, ridiculous. There's no rhyme or reason to any of the, almost any of the prison basketball parallels. You got stuff number to 299 or 199 some for twice, stuff number to 49, and then there's a 35 and three different 25s and a 20, and then 125 sells for, the Mojo Prism sells for three, four, five times, the Green Prisms, and they're both numbered to 25, so... I think, like like Dave was saying, like at some point the pricing model, the pricing structure just breaks, and it's just you almost have to you basically have to price all seventeen thousand cards <laughs> by hand. But it takes forever. If there were to be in some of these new initiatives, uh, some artificial intelligence aspect where where there's robotic, uh, you know, searching for bargains, then any algorithm is going to point out that that might be an apparent bargain that it's one of so many and it's worth a lot less than this other, and wouldn't that tend to even things out maybe if if there was some pro program trading? Yeah, it's certainly like the stock. Yeah, it would certainly help. Something that is the perception of being either something's overpriced or something's underpriced. Well, I think... Uh, and then somebody's going to buy them up. As, maybe. As, as we've seen with... Because the, the market will correct. With the silver prism, even though it's not as rare, there's people searching for it. And with the Mojo out of 25, there's people that want that. They're going for that. So there's more demand for that. It is legitimately a more valuable card, even though something might be just as scarce. The same player, almost identical design, just a different color. People are going after Mojo because they've seen them before. There's heritage to it. With the Prism, it's something that simplifies everything. It's not a million different things to go after. There's one, like key thing that comes out every year and I want to get my key player from this key card and sure there might be a different color that's more rare this year but there wasn't last year and I, and I don't have um, like a common thread through my collection so I there it, those are legitimately more valuable cards even though they may not be as rare it, it's just the there's demand, demand. It's it's the, demand. The, the demand there's there's specific parallels there's specific sets that have created demand that, like gold refractors sell for way more than any other other parallels. It, and some of it has to do with how well the cards look, how well they yeah. get photographed, what what the auctions look like. If a card doesn't look as good, it doesn't pop as much. So there's a lot of nuances that you. It's hard to put into an algorithm unless the algorithm is also looking at what are people actually buying. People are buying. They're paying more for the mojo. They're not paying for the serial number. Well, you have an SRP, and it's basically algorithmically driven, as you've admitted. Mm -hmm. But when Brian's doing what I used to do, mm -hmm. I think why we got paid is because there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, if it's all formulaic, yeah. and this player's worth more than this player, and this set is better than this set, and this parallel is better than this parallel, if that's the case, we don't need any analysts. It can all be done by the computer. The problem is, that works for a lot of cards, but there are exceptions. And we got paid, and we have followed because we were able to really track the exceptions pretty well. Right. Of right. which there were many. Right. When you have, it didn't make sense. You they know, were, yeah, there's, there's, there's still Celtics and Warrior second round picks or free agent signings who buy $600 for these cards. I'm like, okay, come on, who is this guy? I've never heard of it. And I love you. Oh, he's, he's, he's averages 1.9 points a game, plays three minutes a game, and it sells for. Six eight hundred dollars. Taco like, Fall. Well, Taco Fall's another guy. Well, so, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, that that was Ron Callaway cool. baseball when you were just beginning. Oh, yeah, his cool. parents were chasing every one of the autographs he had, so he was actually selling for more <laughs> than better players. But one question I have for you is: when you're dealing with the unnumbered Panini Prism inserts, mm -hmm. have do you look and see? Because I, I assume you're still getting eBay downloads. No? Yeah. Do you look and see? Okay, we got forty orange holograms and thirty purple patches. Yeah, that's really outside and, when they when you know Panini's pretty good about releasing. Well, if, if I ask a lot of times, they'll tell me um, off the record which ones are rare, which ones are um, tougher than others. But it is really just, okay, well, I'm going to search green ice. Okay, there's 2,000 completed. I'm going to search pink ice. Okay, there's only 300 completed. So I'm guessing the pink ice are going to be, and I'm making those up, but I'm th yeah. guessing the, the pink yeah. ice oh, is, yeah. is tougher than the green ice. <laughs> the, blue this year. Well, whatever, exactly. I, see, and I remember sitting in that chair a while back and doing that same stuff. Mm -hmm. And part of that problem would be we had a deadline to get this stuff priced, and all of a sudden, well, the fat packs haven't hit the market yet so that unique orange there's only a couple of them out there like that might be the most scary yes. well, that might be the toughest one to find that. <laughs> but you know they just haven't seen that second market due to scarcity yeah. all the time like, why don't you price this yeah. right. pricing it's because we don't see any right. sense. It's, it's a retail only parallel, or yeah. well, it's basketball too. Right? It's any anything. Ooh. It's a retail yeah, only. Whoa. It's a fat pack exclusive. It's yeah. a hanger pack. It's a it's a Dollar General exclusive, and we don't see it. A few years ago, I made the mistake, and I think it was I could be wrong with the years, but 
it, I want to say it was Carl Anthony Towns, the white sparkle mm-hmm. packs the first time you did it. We saw a few sales on some of the veterans, and I just kind of priced it using our model and kind of priced it out. Well, what we didn't realize was that the rookies were super, super short printed. So we had some, again, I think it was Carl Anthony Towns that we booked it like $40 because that's the way it kind of worked out based on the LeBron sale and the Kobe sale. And okay, Carl Anthony Towns, you should be $40. We, you know, we get a, a few days later, we get emails and from, from people saying, how is this $40? Is Carl selling for $600 online and because there's <laughs> one sale. Like you don't, so a lot of times that's the example I always use as to why we don't just, oh, I'm just going to look at the LeBron and I'll price everything off of that. It'll be fine. So you have to be cautious. Exactly. And then we, then it, then it kind of gets us in trouble because <coughs> people expect everything to be priced. Well, at a certain time, so they can sell it on the marketplace exactly. or, or whatever, whatever. Which I understand, yeah. they're, they're, you know, Joe's paying for that information every right. month, so I understand. I get it. Rob's paying for that. Everybody's paying for it. I understand. Our, our right. online price guide subscribers are paying for it. Um, so I understand. I'd be the same way. I yeah. want it priced. And I want it complete. And I want it accurate. I get that a lot though. With like, you're buying you're buying cards from a from a tire company in Canada. I, and there's just there's no pricing information on it. I'm sorry, I can't price it for you. Yeah. If you want to see pricing, give me verifiable information. Yeah. I think a lot of people still think it's just like a. Fantasy, like we just kind of like throw darts at a ball. Yeah, and make it up. That's I'm certain that's what we did. Needed a lot less people. Like, why would I be? But uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for candor. Thanks for uh, participating, and uh, we'll do it again next year. And I'll probably see y'all clean down then. But again, thanks for uh, a nice uh, evening.